Hi everyone! In this episode I have Casio Privia PX860 Digital Piano for repair. It's plugged in, but it doesn't power up when I push this power button. Let's take a look. Here we can see it is plugged in and it has this external power supply. So the first thing to check is this power supply. Here is the power supply and look at this. There is no DC output at all. And I tried wiggling this uh, power cord just to see if it's broken here or maybe here. And it does not seem to make any difference. So the next step would be to check if we have mains power here. So let's switch to AC and check. And we do have mains 123 volts. So something is wrong with this power supply and hopefully this is the only problem. I have seen a case when a power supply for Zoom R16 mixing board apparently died because of some surge and because of poor protection in the power supply that killed the mixing board as well. I have videos about that, I will put links in the description. Hopefully it's not the case here and piano is fine. If so, this can be fixed by replacing this power supply. But if you watch my channel, you probably know that it would be cheating here. Let's try fixing this supply just for the fun of it and for education. The problem might be with this power cord or inside of this power supply. And in my view, the power cord would be the worst case, especially if it's broken here near this connector. In that case, we would need to chop it off and uh, find a replacement connector, which might be a problem. It would be slightly better if it's broken here, let's say. In that case, we might uh, chop it off and make it slightly shorter. But the best case would be if something is wrong inside. And to find out if it's the cord or something inside, we need to open this thing up anyway. So let's crack it open and take a look. Let's take a closer look. This is a Casio model AD-E24250LW. Made in China. 24 volts, 2.5 amps. And it has universal input. It can work from 100 volts to 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. So for different countries it can go with different power cord with suitable connector for that country. And as usually this thing is welded shut. So we need to somehow crack this weld. And uh, my approach is to hit it with something massive and soft like this uh, screwdriver handle, like so. I will do this off camera. And with some patience it usually works fine. This thing was quite tough. I ended up using this rubber mullet on a concrete floor in my garage. And I managed to damage the case a bit. Uh, there is a crack here and a crack here. But finally I managed to crack it here. So now I should be able to pry this apart, I suppose. Here we are. It was not very easy, but I managed to crack this thing open with some cosmetic damage to the case. If we put it back together like so, we can see some damage here. And uh, some more damage here. And here. And as I showed before, a crack here and a crack here. But let's not worry about this for now. I want to point out that if you are doing something like this, be very careful, don't touch the primary side. There might be some large capacitors holding high voltage for quite some time, especially if this thing is not working properly. We can see this isolation gap between the primary side and the secondary side. And we can see this large capacitor on the primary side. And look at this. hundred and thirty six volts. 
I'm using the power resistor across this cap to discharge it. This is a 220 ohm resistor. I found a couple of cracked soldering joints. Hopefully you can see in 4K here and here. And of course it is hard to tell now if it was like this before or this is a result of my violence on the case of this thing. Now let's check the cord. This is negative. No problem here. And uh, this is uh, positive. No problem as well. I am glad about this. I would rather deal with electronics than mechanical problems. I removed this shield. It was glued on top of this transformer. Now we can take a closer look at the board. Let's see. Uh, this is the mains input. A couple of capacitors and uh, chokes for filtering. Oops, this brown thing in the corner is a fuse. This is an NTC marked on the board for in-rush current limiting. Bridge rectifier here. High voltage capacitor. Uh, probably a resistor here in hitch ring for current sensing. This is a MOSFET probably. Transformer here. And uh, this was the primary side. On this side of the board there is a small controller chip running the primary side, a couple of uh, diodes, some passives, and uh, that's it for the primary side. On the secondary side we see some uh, chip for regulation perhaps, and this looks like a current sensing resistor, uh, 5 milliohms, I think. So there must be some uh, current limiting going on as well as uh, voltage regulation. And that's why perhaps uh, two optocouplers are used instead of one for opto-isolated feedback to the primary side. Uh, some transistor here, a Zener diode. And let's see on this side, capacitor there across the gap. These are wires uh, from the transformer. This is the secondary winding. These are two uh, rectifier diodes. Uh, two smoothing capacitors here. An inductor and one more capacitor. And that's it. Not very complicated and should be fixable unless something is wrong with one of the chips and they happen to be hard to get. And after even closer look at this, I can see that these two pins with cracked soldering joints are connected together. Hopefully you can see uh, this pad. And it does not go anywhere. There is no trace from this pad. And these two pins are from the transformer. And the secondary winding is separate. So I think that uh, this is just for mechanical support. I will resolder them, of course, but I don't think this is a problem. And on the primary side, I uh, looked up this chip and uh, unfortunately I couldn't find the datasheet for it. I found the chips sold on AliExpress, but no datasheet there. But I can see this um, thick trace going to the negative of the capacitor. And uh, this is the negative of the bridge rectifier, and this is uh, one side of this capacitor across the gap. So I believe this must be a local common uh, of the primary side. And it also goes to this pin, and these two pins are from the transformer as well. So I believe this is auxiliary winding for powering up this chip. Uh, so uh, this is common as we have seen and this is rectified and goes to these uh, smoothing capacitors. And uh, from here 
to this capacitor and uh, to the chip. And uh, this is a jumper under this uh, capacitor. Uh, and uh, these two uh, high value resistors connected to the mains and I believe this is uh, for startup uh, to get this chip started and once it's started it should get power from this auxiliary winding. So we can start by checking power rail of this chip and start measuring things around here and try to understand what's going on. I managed to find something like a data sheet but not quite, just one page no specifications at all, and in particular the operating voltage of this chip is unknown, and no pin numbers as well, but still some description in this typical application diagram. So this is the Power Forest PF6000 chip, green mode ACDC PWM controller with extremely low startup current. And here they say that startup current can be as low as several hundred nanoamps. Therefore, startup resistor value can be very high to reduce the power dissipation. So let's zoom in and take a look at the application diagram. This is a quite simple and traditional architecture. AC input is here, there is a fuse, some filtering, bridge rectifier, high voltage filter cap, the primary side of the transformer is driven by this MOSFET. This is a current sense resistor. This goes to current sense pin of the chip. The output pin of the chip drives this MOSFET. This is an auxiliary winding of this transformer to power this chip. These are high value resistors for startup. This pin must be some sort of shutdown. It is mentioned here for over temperature protection through NTC. This is the NTC, which is a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. When temperature of this thing goes up, resistance goes down, and that pulls down this pin and should shut down the chip, I suppose. This pin must be for opto-isolated feedback from the secondary side here. This is a voltage reference. So when the output voltage on the secondary side goes too high, the LED should shine more and pull down this uh, feedback pin. And that should lead to reduction in uh, PWM duty cycle, and that in turn should lead to reduction in the output voltage, and vice versa. And in our case, the secondary side is a bit more complicated. There is a second optocoupler, which is connected here across this NTC, this must be an additional protection, perhaps over current protection, because we have seen a current sense resistor on the secondary side, and there is some chip, perhaps for regulation and for current sensing with voltage reference and comparator or something like that. So I thought this must be a transformer winding to power this chip, and we should see a very low resistance there, but look at this. nothing. So I believe something is wrong here. I desoldered this transformer and I see a problem here. This plastic base can move a little and I see a broken wire there. And by the way, these two pins are indeed just for mechanical support, no wires connected to them. Here is this broken wire. I desoldered this wire temporarily to have access, and here I added this piece of wire to replace this short piece. Now it's time to solder here. And here it is, trimmed to size and joined here. Now it's time to solder this one back. And here is the result. The transformer is soldered back. Let's see if this was the problem, or I broke it in the process of cracking this thing open, and there is some other problem with something else. I found a suitable connector for convenience, and look at this! 23.1 volts, 
a bit lower than promised 24 volts, but that's okay, I suppose. It doesn't have to be precise. Now let's give it some load. Let's start with, uh, let's say, 100 milliamps. Turn this thing on. No problem. Let's go higher. 500. 1 amp. No problem. Amp and a half. 2 amps. 2 and a half, which is the maximum for this power supply. There is some voltage drop due to long wires and connections, so this is perfectly fine. And we have about, uh, let's say, 0.8 amps uh, consumption from the mains. So it is working. I'm quite happy about this. A few drops of super glue and the supply is back together. Here is the result. If you look closely, you might be able to see that it was opened, but it's not too bad. And sure enough, the piano powers up. Takes a few seconds to boot up. There you go. It is working fine. Thanks for watching. Bye.